um, interior design is a wonderful thing that suffers from, I mean, interior design of the formerly decorating kind, from a triple stigma amongst people who like triple stigmas. One, it's done for the rich. Do you know, serious, uh, full-on interior design is done for the rich, so people think, ooh, don't, serving the rich, not so good. And its practitioners are almost universally smart, well-off, socially connected women and gay men. So its critics don't actually say that because that would sound a bit nasty and bad, but it's what they are thinking when they say that this is um, frivolous or surface or anything like that. Uh, for my own part, I love everything. All sorts of interiors can be exciting. Great metaphors for the people who live in them or work in them or club together for refuge in them, as you'll see in Bridget Smith's pictures. We're talking about that working, clubbing, operating side of interiors today and about interiors that mostly aren't the outcome of conscious design. You know, they're the outcome of the people who live and work in them. They've happened by accident, but they're very, very interesting accidents. We begin, in Ben's words, by looking at what sorts of spaces make popular culture. Art schools, community clubs and halls, or temples of avant-garderie. Always interesting, a temple of avant-garderie. And our first, and we've got to talk about this, we've got three people who are positive human tuning forks for Atmos, people who pick up ghosts in interesting places. Sometimes they photograph them. Um, they're each going to speak for about 15 minutes about a place that's of absolute obsessive interest to them.